We posted the same question for Ed Reed yesterday, but what about Bethune-Cookman? What's next for the university as far as athletics and most importantly, the student body? In addition to that, we're also going to discuss Isaiah Burke's hot season and why it has Morgan State tied for first place in MEAC basketball. Oh yeah, it's Locked on HBCU. Play my music. You are Locked on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one. One, daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU Athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And now, of course, Sam Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And remember, just because the mic cuts off does not mean that the journey is over. It just means it's time to follow me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Don't forget the S on the end if you're on the YouTube side. Just look at the bottom of the screen, man. Y'all know the drill by now. And today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. So, FanDuel is the official sports book of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started, and we will talk about them as the show progresses. But first, we need to talk about a big-time question. What's next for Bethune-Cookman? And I understand that this is an athletic show nine times out of ten, but here goes the tenth time. We're going to talk about the student body. We're going to start off initially talking about it because this story has quickly outgrown football. Yes, it started with Ed Reed and a tirade on Instagram Live, but we've seen what this situation has flourished to. We've seen what it has become, and I don't feel right not talking about this aspect of it as well. So we're going to talk about this for a little bit, and we're going to fade into the football program as well. But I just don't want to ignore this because when you ask the question, what's next for Bethune-Cookman, the number one priority is the student body. Yeah, I saw the the video of Bethune-Cookman sharing helmets, and I thought that was unacceptable, but I also saw the picture of the living conditions, and I think that should be priority number one, so that's what we're going to talk about first. You know, I just think it makes sense, so roll with me, let's rock. So we're going to look at Bethune-Cookman. The first thing you need to do is go and listen to the demands of the students and the student leaders. And I'm not telling you to give in to everything that they say. I don't know everything that they're asking for. But you should give in to everything that's reasonable because at the end of the day, this is your campus. This is your school. The students are a representation of you. I know people who aren't proud, proud in where they went to school. I know people who have no pride in their alma mater. You want people to be proud alumni of your school. You want them to have a good time while they're there. You want them to be safe while they're there. All of these things should be present. All of these things can be present. And I think they will be present as well. So when you're looking at Bethune-Cookman, the first thing they got to do is listen to what they want. And one thing I do not want them to do is I don't want them to place a greater emphasis. Talking about Bethune-Cookman. I don't want Bethune-Cookman to place a greater emphasis on making sure that the public image is restored rather than what's actually going on. I understand that you're going to have PR people. You have people who are in higher up who want to make sure that their school looks good. But in order to make it look good as an image goes, you have to make sure that it is actually good as far as reality goes. That's what you have to do. Don't play a great don't place a greater emphasis on making sure that the media thinks that, oh, everything's good at Bethune Cookman. The damage is done. There's nothing you can do to snap your fingers and make people forget everything that's been transpiring. So you got to get down there. You got to actually do the work and make things better and then hope that the the restoration of your image in the media happens organically. Otherwise, you're not doing you're not doing your job properly. Then again, there's been a lot of talk that they're not doing a job properly anyway. So why should I expect anything different? Now we will move forward into football, because the tough part about this scandal is that football is a part of it. And because football is a part of it, it's going to fade and pop back up. It's January. It's still the winter. And the season only matters because, yeah, this will go from the front of people's mind to the back of people's mind. Be something that they only really remember when they're reminded of it because it's not, you know, out of sight, out of mind. Right. But then football comes up. And because this story is consistently tied to football, it's going to consistently be brought back up. Spring ball comes around. There's no Ed Reed on that campus. There's no there's no Ed Reed coaching that team. It's going to be brought up. 
And maybe you escape the spring ball because a lot of time HBCU spring ball ain't even really covered like that. So maybe you are able to escape the pressure of spring ball stories. No murmurs during, you know, th those months. But once you get to the fall, there's no escaping that. Once you get to playing the money games, every single week you're going to hear it. When you play Miami, you're going to hear it. When you play, you know, I can't remember anybody who's, who else is on their schedule at the moment. But when you play those games. They're going to talk about why Ed Reed is not on the campus. And it's not a, an old story to them. It's not beating a dead horse to them because you're going against another school every time. This isn't even conference play where this is old conference news. And you might mention it the first couple of times, but not really. Every single time you play a new school, especially when you're the underdog, if you're not going down to the D2 level, if you're going to be on ESPN Plus playing Miami or whatever, playing Florida or somebody, they're going to bring this up every single week. That's how media works. It's what they should do. It's a big story. It's going to be arguably the biggest story surrounding your school when it comes to football all next season. And that's why I think it's so important that you have to get strong leadership. That statement could be made for the board of trustees and everybody else as well. That's something else. You got to get strong leadership position filled, period. Whether that's football coach, whether that's athletic director, whether that's board of trustees, no matter what. You have to get these positions filled. You have to, that's number one, that's the number two priority. If number one priority is the students, number two priority is making sure you fill the voids and maybe even creating some voids to fill with strong leaders. And when I'm talking about the football program, you need a coach who, not no interim, you need somebody who is going to be making a statement, I am here. You have 50 plus inquiries, right? That's what you said. You got 50 plus inquiries. Someone in there has to be a strong leader. And I'm not saying he has to be overly charismatic. I'm not saying he has to be a lot of things. I'm telling you that he can't be weak. He can't. Because you're going to need somebody who's going to be the face of this. Right now, Bethune-Cookman is the face of it. But you're going to hear questions. You need somebody who is able to work that side. Somebody who's going to be able to work the media side and say, listen, Ed Reed, X, Y, and Z. I'm not writing no PR script. Y'all got to cut a check. But you need somebody who is going to be here and is going to take that. Now, if you're my age... Or maybe you got some kids who are my age or maybe you just like embracing your inner child, which I'm all for. You've probably seen the SpongeBob episode where he's delivering pizzas instead of burgers. And it's the Krusty Krab pizza, right? You just got to be walking through the face of all the storm, all of the conditions, all of the wind, everything pushing you back. You still have to make sure that you're pushing forward. Just seeing your little Krusty Krab pizza is the pizza for you and me and get through this season because you're not going to stop with the onslaught of questions, especially in the first couple of weeks. I wouldn't even say it's so much about wins and losses losses even though wins will shut everybody up about what ed reed could have been but you got to have somebody who during the off season would lead you to something before or excuse me take care of you before we even get to the place to have wins and losses you need strong leadership if you're bethune cookman and you're asking yourself what's next it's very simple first off take care of them kids get everything in order secondly get people in leadership positions that know what they're doing and can handle this even if you have to create a void to fill it, make sure you get the right people in each of these areas. I don't care if it's board of trustees. I don't care if it's athletic director. I don't care if it's the football program, the football head coach. You have to make sure that people in positions of leadership are knowing what they're doing and executing properly. It's clear that right now that is not the case. That cannot still be the you can't still be in the same situation in October. A 2020, you can't do that. You got to make some changes. That's what's next for Bethune Cookman. And going forward, we're going to switch over to the MEAC. We're going to talk about basketball because Morgan State and Isaiah Burke have been pretty much on fire, especially Burke all season long. We're going to talk about how his success has led to Morgan State being tied for first place in the MEAC as we continue with Locked on HBCU. Before we get into that, today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. They are, they are our newest partner. And listen, make Everything matter more. FanDuel has everything you need. And here goes the special. This is for everybody who is new to FanDuel. You sign up, put your first $5 bet in. And after you make a $5 bet, they're going to give you 150, 150 free bets to put on anything. Go crazy. 
Put it on the, the Bengals to beat the Chiefs. Or do you think the Chiefs are going to pull off that upset? I kind of feel like things are setting up for it, but I'm not betting against Joe Burrow, man. And then if you're looking at the NFC side of things, you got the Eagles and the 49ers. Who's coming out of there? Can Jalen Hurts complete his probably near MVP season with a Super Bowl appearance? Let me know what you're thinking. And then who's going to win the Super Bowl? There's so many things. The NFL playoffs are not over. Continue to put your money down on it. And you're going to be doing it on FanDuel. Make every moment more. FanDuel.com slash locked on is where you need to go. Put down a $5 bet and you get 150. That's 150 in free bets. As we keep rolling on today's episode of Locked on HBCU, I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day. For your second listen, check out Locked on College Basketball wherever you listen to your podcast, the same way that you do Locked on HBCU. But with this one, you can check out everything you need around NCAA men's basketball and women's basketball in one place. It's just that simple. It's a simple decision. Go ahead and check them out right after I finish, but not a second earlier. But <laughs> not a second earlier. Y'all keep rolling with me. Let's get through all three segments here. Isaiah Burke and Morgan State have been on fire, and they are sitting tied for number one in the MEAC in a really tough conference. Actually, that number one spot, that tie, does not include Morgan State, or excuse me, does not include Norfolk State. You know, I don't know when's the last time you go into MEAC play and feel like Morgan State or Norfolk State, excuse me, is not the number one team. They're sitting they're currently sitting at number four. That's crazy. And Morgan State is one of the teams that actually knocked them off. So there's a three team tie for the top of the MEAC. Norfolk State, who everybody believes is the king and I think still has to not count them out. They're not a part of that. A big reason that they're not in Morgan State is is because of Isaiah Burke. He's been on fire these last couple of weeks, and even saying these last couple of weeks to me kind of feels like a slight because he's actually been on fire pretty much all year long. But in these last three weeks, he's been the consecutive MEAC player of the week three weeks in a row. So this is a guy who you have to show love to. In his last five games, let me read these off to you. 30 ball, 30 ball, career high 31, then back-to-back -back 20 pieces, 21, 21. You know what I'm saying? In the last couple of games... This guy has been so special. This guy has been so prolific. And this is one of the things that we talked about with Morgan State, and we're going to get to it in a little bit. But I want to just rave about him as an individual a little bit more before I get into the team success and why them knocking off Norfolk in the way they did it was so important. Isaiah Burke is the 18th leading scorer in the nation. Not in the MEAC, not in HBCU, but in the nation. We're talking about all these schools. Think about the Big Ten, Big 12, uh, Pac-12, uh, SEC. I'm forgetting one. Big 12, ACC. Like there's there's all of these schools, the the mid major that you think of, all the FCS football teams, they're all a part of this once we get to basketball. And he's number eighteen out of everybody. And this guy has been so dynamic from three, consistently, lethal from three point. He makes the most three pointers per game. He has the best three point percentage in the conference. These are these are stats that have helped Morgan State. Because when I talk about Morgan State, if you think back to last week, it's very similar to how I'm talking about Isaiah Burke at this moment, prolific offensive player, deadly from three-point range. These are all things that have now, because obviously I'm talking about an individual, but this is a team sport, and what he does as an individual leads to the team success of Morgan State. One last thing before we just switch to the team. He actually also had, he hit the 1,000-point club. So I, just, I do want to mention that because I thought that was very important. So let's get into that because the three-point play was very important for Morgan State against Norfolk. It was one of the reasons they were able to open up to a quick 14 to nothing lead. It's one of the reasons that when Norfolk State went on the 8-0 run and started closing it into single digits, Morgan State said, nah, we about to shoot this three. Bow, bow, bow. Now we up again. That's how we stop your late game surge. Now there's two things that I want to talk about because we, we had this argument about strength of schedule argument it's just me talking come on but we had this argument so to speak with the with the person in front of me <laughs> but we had this conversation basically about the strength of schedule about Morgan State and they were going to go against Howard and then Norfolk so this was their opportunity to prove that everything they were doing against some people because some people might have needed them to do it against more than just North Carolina Central everything they were doing in their six game win streak they need to show that they could do against top level talent in the MEAC so you have Howard and you have Norfolk State, two top level teams. You go one and one. Let me tell you why this win versus Norfolk was so important. First off, it was second, right? It was the second victory or the second game 
of that. You went Howard, then you went to Norfolk. But you lost to Howard. So you needed that. You needed to you needed to beat Norfolk just for the, the same thing we're talking about. Proving that strength of schedule wasn't the reason that you're so successful. So they beat Norfolk and they dropped 77 points on Norfolk. The latter is the more important thing. Yes, when it comes to at the end of the season, nothing's more valuable than wins. But when we're talking about having conversations and we're talking about image, right? It's a different type of image than what we're talking about with Bethune Cookman. But when we're talking about that, how you win says a lot. How you win is often talked about just as much as rather whether or not you did win. So when you drop 77 on them, that's the second most points that Norfolk State has allowed in regulation all year. The only team to top that was actually Howard. So you're looking at a team that just put up 77 points on a regular, you know, relatively good defensive team in Norfolk State. That's something that you needed because if we're talking about you're being a prolific offense, you're your lowest 61. Next after that is 78. If we're talking about you in that way, and then the conversation is can you do it against other teams? We're not asking you to be a defensive stalwart against these other teams. We're asking you to simply come in and score points so because you didn't do it against Howard everything that people might have wanted you to prove against Howard you now needed to prove against Norfolk State you came out and you did it and that's why the way that you won was so impressive you won with great three-point shooting you won with 77 points and while that might not be the highest for their standard during their win streak because it was winning six in a row and they were hitting 90 they were hitting 80s so it might not be the woo, but 77 against Norfolk State does prove that you can put up points on the better teams in the MEAC. And that's exactly what you wanted to prove. It's something that some people might have said you needed to prove. And it's exactly what you did prove. So that's why I think that this game was so important. Isaiah Burke has been going crazy. He's been, he scored double digits in every single game. He scored over 20 in the last four, over 15 in the last nine. This is a player who has been a key part of this. It's not a winning streak, but they won seven of their last eight and he's been a big part of that what i told you 30 ball 30 ball 31 21 21 this guy's been playing it's the reason that morgan state can say that they are tied for number one tied for number one in the MEAC men's basketball standings and we're going to talk about another team that's heating up and i'll give you a little bit of a hint on on who it might be you can't if you're on the audio i'm pointing at my texas southern flag but if you're here you see what i'm doing Give you a little hint on who it's going to be because my Texas Southern Tigers have heated up and I'm just here to tell you that they have won three in a row. And that's wrapping up today's episode of Locked on HBCU. Shout out to all my segment three folks. I'm just here to tell you one thing. I told you a couple of things before. I told you that Bethune Cookman needs to get this stuff into order. I told you that Morgan State and Isaiah Burke have been scoring prolific numbers in, their, in winning seven out of their last eight. I told you that. But one of the more important things I'm going to tell you all week is that Texas Southern is heating up, baby, and I ain't going to get too cocky. We got a game against Prairie View coming up, and that's a game that's always going to be tough. So I'm not going to come on here and really start popping my collar talking my talk. But what I will do is just tell you the facts, and that's that Texas Southern has scored or has won three games in a row. And the first one was giving Jackson State their first loss of the season. These are undeniable facts. These are things that just these are things that just happen. And I'll tell you the truth. I did waver. I'll admit it. I did waver a little bit. But in the words of Andre Benjamin, my turntables get wobbly. They don't fall. I'm true to this. I told you even back then when I was when I was expressing a little bit of concern for the way that they were losing. I told you there's just something in me. It's my history that just tells me they're going to get it together. And even when you're looking at them, they weren't far off. It's not like they were just getting beat the breaks off them every single game. There's no consolation in losing, especially when you're used to excellence in the way that we are. We, you know, the gold standard when it comes to swag basketball. But we, <laughs> I know I'm, I'm ODing right now, but it's okay. <laughs> but really, consolation losses, they don't exist. Like, we're just going to be critical. But you always saw that they were close. They gave Southern a game. And they were one of the few people to actually give Southern a game this year. It was them, Prairie View, and then UAPB actually knocked them off. But they had to get pushed into overtime with Texas Southern. These are, these are games that were close, and you seen it was there. You just upset because it almost felt like victory was always within their grasp. 
or very close to their hands and they could have grasped it, but they didn't. And I think sometimes that's even more frustrating than just losing. Like you look at it, the least frustrating loss that they had was against Grambling and that was a double digit loss. But that loss against UAPB, that loss against Mississippi Valley, that loss against Southern for sure, because it was a last second shot. All of those were very frustrating losses. But it seems like they put it together. And teams that are right there, teams that are on the brink, especially teams that you know have been good, you trust the coaching, you look at when they lose close, you feel like, okay, they might be able to get it together. You look at a team that doesn't have much success, a team that doesn't have much of a track record, you might not really trust in them to get it together. TSU did. I had faith in, the, faith in them that they would do it, and they have. And one of the things that coincides with this winning streak is the return of Jordan Carl Nicholas. We're going to do a lot of calling back to the first time I talked about TSU. One of the things I was concerned for is that the games have not, they have not had the same paint production or paint protection since Jordan Carl Nicholas went out. Well, he returned against Jackson State. And I'll say that the, the, the paint numbers weren't drastically different, but I think there's just something about chemistry when he's on the court. Because you look at these last two games against Alabama State and Alabama A&M, they've just held teams to the least amount of points that they had all season long in conference play. But then also the offense has gotten better because there's no real statistical jump that you see with with Nicholas. that just makes you say, oh, yeah, he's doing that. And that's why everything's transforming. Even the paint points, some are getting 30. It's just it's just not. It's things that don't show up in the stat sheet. Right. But you look at the defense in total. It is working. You Look at the offense. They're scoring more. They've only scored 70 points one time in regulation before the last three games. They scored over 70 every single time. They're averaging 75 points a game, right? They had 84, 70, 71. That's the last three games that you scored. Like I said, before that, they had only scored over 70 points in regulation one time. So I told you how the defense, even if there isn't some statistical category I can, le and I can, uh, I can leech on to and tell you is the reason that they're getting better on defense, I can tell you that the final number, number is better. Offensively, you got three guys who can go get you a bucket. Devon Barnes, 14 games streak scoring in double digits, nine games over 15. John Walker, I think I actually mixed up his stats with uh, Isaiah Burke, but Isaiah Burke been going crazy. So whether it was nine games in a row, 15 or whatever, he's 18th in scoring, right? But you're talking about Devon Barnes, you got a 14 game streak scoring double digits. You got nine games in a row where you're scoring over 15. John Walker, who was a rollover from last year, who we expected to be one of the better scorers on this team is right there too. He's getting you 20 points if you need it, right? I mean, you look at the the, the freshman, I'm going to say rookie, but the freshman, Zai Mortal, this is a guy who was kind of a surprise to me. I did not see this coming. I didn't hear much about him. But once we got into conference play, especially in that Southern game when you had two of your top scorers out, you seen him really pop. And this is a guy who you know can get you 20. All three of these players can get you 20 points. And that's one thing that I've appreciated about Texas Southern over the last couple of years is it's not just one player. It used to be you had a star player. You don't have that. I don't think TSU has a swipe player of the year on their roster. And I don't know if that's because of the talent level or just because of how they play. But it's way more spreading the ball out. It's way more of scoring by committee. It's not going to have a 20 point per game score. Instead, you're going to have a couple of 13, 14, 16 points per game scores on the team. But that makes them even more dangerous. It adds another level to their danger. So, on tomorrow, excuse me, thank you for making us your first listen of the day every day. Shout out to my Tigers. Give them a shout out. Three game win streak. I show love to my alma mater because I am one of those people who is prideful of where he went to school. I appreciate you for making us your first listen of the day every day. For your second listen, make sure you're checking out Locked On College Basketball with everything you need around the sport in one place, wherever you listen to your podcast, including here. Now I give you the go ahead to go ahead and punch that button and start searching up Locked On College Basketball. On tomorrow's episode, we're going to move to the other two teams who are in this three-way tie for the MEAC, and that's Howard and University of Maryland Eastern Shore. We're going to talk about them on tomorrow's episode, so make sure you tune in and continue making us your first listen. In the meantime, in between time, if you're looking for me, you can find me on Twitter, at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care, stay blessed. Peace.